Welcome everyone to Admiral Markets. Glad that you can join us today. Today is the 11th of March, Tuesday, and uh, the first live trading webinar of this week again. So hopefully you enjoyed Toronto's recap yesterday evening. We're going to take a look at uh, the market as well. But first of all, this PowerPoint explaining, for instance, the disclaimer that uh, this information may not be suitable for everyone. To get the corresponding info on charting conditions and other details, take a look at admiralmarketsglobal.com. Select your country and contact an appropriate entity. The risk disclaimer, of course, also explaining that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Please take the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And this webinar is for educational purposes only. Good. So thank you for your attention on that. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with the risk disclaimer and its content. Good. So today we're going to take a look at the Forex markets, as always, of course taking a look at what kind of opportunities there could be today. And we're going to use this model to establish what the market structure is. And what is market structure? It's basically looking at uh, the trend, looking at chart patterns, momentum, support and resistance to understand where and when we could expect potential um, trend continuations, potential momentums, or reversals, etc. And then we can base our trade plan off of that um, roadmap, basically, right? So the elements we want to look for are trend, opportunity, filters to see if there's anything blocking the trade. Then we're going to establish a trigger, and then we'll decide how to enter. By using this, this checklist, uh, you know, you're preventing, uh, let's say, emotional decisions based on random price movement and more giving a structural outlook of how you can uh, review and analyze the currency so that you don't kind of like um, get emotionally involved in uh, with trading here okay so we're approaching it with uh, with the same consistency good now last week we had NFP and we also had the EU and pound interest rate after we close our room of Thursday and in fact, uh, we saw a lot of uh, euro upside on Thursday, even on Friday a bit, but then some downside after NFP. The pound didn't move that much as the euro to the upside, and it's moving more down ever since. Um, so that also has to do, of course, with the fact that the euro pound is moving up. So let's take a look at that in a second. In the meantime, that was the major events of last week, news events. We got pound, or we just had pound of uh, sorry, pound Bank of Japan press conference, and we have the pound manufacturing production in one hour forty-two with some other euro news, like some uh, Spanish bill auctions, Italian GDP, pork Portuguese GDP, and then some USD news throughout the day. But otherwise, I don't think there's really major, major something this week. Goody good. So uh, this today's topic is uh, trading confluences on multiple time frames. It's something that uh, we actually do probably in each live trading webinar, but uh, today we'll be focusing on it a bit more. So I'll try to show you in which, which cases does it really like match up, and we'll try to keep an eye on that a bit more to emphasize that more. I think we do it anyhow, but today's session we'll try to emphasize that more. Uh, I'm going to do it definitely. We can take a look at those mentioned pairs. Actually, we'll start off with the euro dollar as always, and we'll do those others that you mentioned as well. I'm, I'm sorry to hear about that, by the way. Um, let's see what we can do to 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 help you uh, out of those uh, particular situations. First of all, I'll give you my feedback on how I look at these currencies, and if you have any follow-up questions, just let me know. Okay. Good morning, Ian. Ian. Good to see you. So if anyone has questions by any chance, by all means, I uh, love to hear from you because you know questions mean that basically you're, you're paying attention or, or you're at least interested. So I like to, to see that interest. So uh, by all means, don't be shy. And no, no need to be, you know, wait for anything. Just you can always 
uh, ask any questions. You don't have to wait for me to finish particular pairs or no problem. So the euro dollar. Uh, let's see. We had this up spike. Wait, I don't have my drawing to open yet. One second. We had this up spike that I want to uh, show you. Of course, on Thursday we had this it was positive euro news, and then we had Friday continuation, and then NFP brought it down, but not as much as the pound. And then we've had some kind of like sideways chop on Monday, right? Monday, well, yesterday was no 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 trading action here on the euro dollar at least. So what can we expect now? Personally, if I look at this, it definitely looks like a bullish structure. It, uh, it still has very much momentum here, as you can see. And if we look at the four-hour chart, we can easily see this uptrend channel. So the trend is up. However, um, would I want to buy it right here, right now? No. And the reason is very simple is because we're actually quite close to, for instance, these resistances. You see these purple lines here? Those are from the daily chart, and you can see that although we did poke through this top. We only did so by a couple of pips. So I wouldn't say this is a major, major breach. It's not a, like a, a really a, a break of that high that one could say, okay, all resistance is out of the way. In fact, if you look at the daily candle that broke this top, right, because this is a major top, this is a top that has lasted for a significant amount of time from dating back to uh, December last year. So logically important level. Also, it was the 61.8 fib of the weekly chart, right? So key level 139, 138.90. But how do we break? We broke with a daily candle that had a wick. And if you zoom into four-hour candles, a four-hour chart, sorry, we don't have any single candle above it, only a wick. So it, it, it's definitely not like a clear, clear cut break here. So that is uh, that resistance is still is still uh, there. It's still you know potentially important for the market. So that's one thing. Also, of course, we're at the top of this uptrend channel. So back to the four-hour chart here. Let me zoom out a bit. We're at the up top of this uptrend channel, which means <clears throat> that the chances of a lot of upside potential seem limited now. Unless we really break above 139, 139.15 and we start to break above this channel, well then we could move up to 140. But I would need, I would personally want to wait for that confirmation before um, before trading that. The other, of course, possibility, and I think that's more likely, is I don't see this breaking. If it does, fine. If not, then I'm a bit more cautious with upside until price retraces. How far? Difficult to say. It could be any of these fibs, in fact. Any of these four fibs could be the bouncing spot. So we'll have to judge on a lower time frame uh, how far the correction could go to. That's always difficult with fibs. In fact, in these cases, all of them can be used. Right? If we look at the previous fib, last week we were saying, oh, be careful because this is also an uptrend, and be careful of these fibs. And um, we can see that it took a, took a while. There was some downside, slow downside movement, but eventually we did get the bounce at the 61.8, just like we had the bounce here at the 61.8, just like we had the bounce here at the 61.8. So you can see the market is definitely using this 61.8 th three times in a row. In fact, will there be a fourth? Almost seems would be almost too too funny if it were to be fourth in a row. So I would almost say probably it would be a different fit, but you never know. It could be any of these. But you can see the market is building on higher highs, higher lows, is using these uh, golden ratio fibs for these upsides and continuing to hit those targets and then retracing. So that's what I would expect today. Retracement back to the fib, bounce somewhere this week again, probably here, and then move up. Right? So that's that seems the most likely. Now, if we bounce, for instance, here, we fail to move up and then break the, the trend channel, well, then obviously something else is going on. And this uptrend, established uptrend, is not, not important anymore. It's broken, right? But until then, 
this is an uptrend. Now, there could be some reversal trade today. Today, there could be a counter trend reversal day. But those are always more difficult to trade. Those are always a bit more um, dangerous to trade. Uh, because Why? Because price could bounce off many support levels. And, you know, it's just a question how far this retracement can go. So it does look like we're going to have a retracement day today. If you look at the 15, we already started with some downside here. So uh, the first bouncing spot could be the 38.2 fib. That's pretty close here at this level. And then we'll have to see if we get continuation or not. If we hook back before we hit this target, I do think there is a short potential up down to the 38.2 fib. If we, if we don't make the hook back and just fall immediately to the FIB and then make a bear flag and break that bear flag, there should be another short down to the 50 FIB. If we make a downside and bounce strongly off the 38.2 FIB and then start to make a bull flag, then I would say look for the break of that bull flag for upside. Right? So I would say those are the scenarios. Either immediate follow through to the, through the 38.2, then we'll have to see how price responds. Do we get a bear flag or do we get a, bounce, a stronger bounce? A stronger bounce could mean upside. A bear flag could mean uh, if we break the so downside to the, third, to the 50 fib, or maybe even the 61.8. If we hook back, instead of immediately, immediately moving down to the 38.2, but hook back, then there could be some shorting opportunities from an intraday perspective down to these FIBs. So it depends on your how you trade. If you're looking, if you're a swing trader and not so much an intraday trader, then this downside is not so interesting for you because, uh, or for us as swing traders, because of the fact that the space is relatively limited. The space probably to the upside is more more interesting. It would be more interesting to wait for price to hit the 50 or the 61.0 or 78.6 and then wait and then take the trade up to the 140 for to 250 pipper. That has more space than downside. If you're trading intraday then today could have some downside momentum, but you have to be cautious and be careful that you know the currency doesn't turn around sooner than we think, and we get a reversal earlier. You don't want to get caught in, you know, we pity to get caught in shorts while this then starts to bounce up for an uptrend continuation. But there could be that that, that intraday downside pressure uh, today. So if you if a trader only trades the euro dollar and trades it that day in day out, then personally I would be looking for that retracement potential here today. And maybe at the end of the day we can see probably maybe you know as a swing trader it could be a good moment to try to position yourself for a potential long. Using my time factor rule for instance. Um, let me see if there's anything else to add. Well, we can put a fib, by the way, on this downside here. You can see the first target lines up with the 38.2. The second target, the minus 618, lines up with the 50 fib. And the third target, the minus 1,000, lines up with the 61.8 fib. So there's confluence. This is an example. Today's webinar is about trading confluences on multiple time frames. So this is an example. The retracement fib is the hourly. The this target FIB is uh, from the 50 minute world, so these are confluences on multiple time frames. And if we then zoom out to the 4 hour chart, you can see that if the price will go deeper, for instance, we can see that the price could even use the bottom of this uptrend channel, another confluence. Or if price could use, for instance, these tops in here as a bounce, potential bounce spot too. So another confluence, although this one is kind of in the middle of that fib, but this one is close to the 61.8. Maybe moving averages can give us confluence. Let's take a look.
Yep, they also provide, you can see potential support in this level and in this level. Those are where the two sets of moving averages are. On the euro dollar, you can see that this is rounding down, which means we have a potential for the AO to go back to the zero line. How about the hourly? Let's take a look. Let me zoom in. Yeah, we have a, a pretty bearish one hour candle here. And you can see that we broke below the faster moving averages, the 34 EMA band, the target of which, normally speaking, is the slower moving averages. So you can see that if we retrace, for instance, uh, part of uh, this uh, last hour's candle, there could be that potential to fall. Now, once again, this is, I believe, more riskier trading because the, the moment, the, the momentum of today is counter trend the momentum of the trend. And that's always more risky in my experience. Okay, so oh yeah, I, uh, I think I've explained that well enough. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll move on. I don't want to bore everyone here, but I just want to make, basically, just want to make sure that my point is clear. That's all. So that's why I'm repeating these things sometimes. Uh, this this magenta trend line, for instance, if we break above the magenta, if we break above this this high, then there's a potential to to actually break out to the upside. Right, right in here, or even this high is could be important. Those two levels. Let's move on to the pound. Pound dollar is fell out of this triangle. It uh, had a lot of weakness here because it just couldn't break to the upside, despite the strong momentum here. And the momentum was very strong. Because how? Why is that? Because price moved up a lot of pips in a very, uh, very short period of time. Right, so it it just basically in a couple of candles really moved up aggressively. It, you're talking about a 700 pip move, and it looks like within a couple, two, three days maybe, which is which is strong. It's a very aggressive move, right? Because um, it, it, I mean, it's almost like let me let me to be precise. Let me take a look. Well, it's actually more than a couple of days. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Ah, but there was a weekend in between. That's why. Okay. Well, it's still like a week, but still, it's it's a it's a. You can see compared to this, obviously, doesn't have to be too precise. That this is just choppiness, and this is very momentum, right? That's easy to see. So, but the problem is that this was looking like a, a normal correction. And it was, you know, you would expect a, a bull flag break, and we did try to break. It just didn't go anywhere. So after it took, after something like this takes too long to develop, eventually there's there is a certain kind of like sweet spot where a breakout should materialize. Otherwise, it's just taking long, and then the chances actually of a breakout not occurring are increasing. And that's what happened here on the pound dollar, and we and we moved down. One way of looking at it is using the moving averages, for instance this. You can see that um, eventually moving averages were really flat here, no angle. And uh, let's see, maybe the hourly is better for this. Here, hourly. Uh, let's see. Yeah, when we didn't get the follow through here, and let's see specifically here then you know things are just taking very long more specific more maybe easier to count is for instance if you look at this daily chart let's zoom into the daily candles here for instance here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen it's really taking long so let's see we had we're still in an uptrend it's just that we could get a bigger retracement like the euro dollar, some retracement, 
if we put a fib on this upside here, you can see price stopped at the 38.2 fib, which means we can stop there again. We don't have to, we could make kind of like a double bottom here. Or we could break down and bounce and move to the 50 fib. All right, but uh, there is a potential that price might not get to the 50 fib. It might use these blue moving averages as a support level. Uh, however, if we look at lower time frames, there is reason to believe that we could see some follow through there. Then the 50 fib would be the bouncing spot. So here too, it's a bit of a not an easy setup in the sense that we still have the upside pressure potential. On the daily chart, for instance, you can see that very clearly, right? Up, correction, up, correction, up, correction. So this pattern might continue. However, in the four hour chart, it took so long that we are now correcting deeper. How deep is the question? So that will be basically the key, key, key question here. How, can we continue with the correction or are we going to bounce indeed? And if we do continue with the correction, will we then bounce off the 50 fib? If we bounce off the 50 fib and then make an, and start to continue with this downside, then you know we're slowly but surely building on a downtrend. In fact, okay, let's move over to the hourly, and we can see there is reason to believe that we could get downside because we have very momentum downside with a very you know bear flag. If you look at the last piece here on a 50 minute chart. We can see this is looking like a bear flag. Momentum, bear flag, momentum, bear flag. So maybe we'll see that breakthrough. This is not an easy trade though to the downside because price could spike up in fact to this FIB. Price could spike up to the, uh, for instance, oh, there it is. Could move up to the 38.2 fib, for instance, because the 23.6 fib, where it's right now, is a very shallow fib. So that is the risk. Anytime this breaks lower, as we can see here, look at this recent uh, downside. On the five minute chart, you can see any time it broke lower, it went up. Broke lower, went up. Broke lower, it's moving up again. So difficult to, to trade. If, uh, if we do get a downside, eventually we, uh, you know, we, could, we could then expect price maybe to go to two different regions or areas that we have some confluence. For instance, at about 166 and about 165.50. Now, let's take a look at the uh, this 50 minute chart again. Yeah, not person too too fan, not a big fan of this break here because of the um, limited potential at first. If we do get a break and then a hook back, then maybe the continuation is more interesting. Or if we move back higher, those will be more interesting than trading in right here right now. So I would say that's basically the, the outlook for me on the pound dollar. Just wanted to see, just waiting to see if we get a downside day today or will today be indeed uh, more of a rebound day here on this pound. That remains still a question mark. If we, uh, if we look at the long term time frame though, we can see the obvious, the upside is still present. Just a question how far does correction go. Let's take a look quickly at our Camarilla indicator, okay? And then we'll move over to Euro Pound, Dollar Yen, uh, Odd USD, and Odd New Zealand. We're having actually a L4 short breakout right here, and we hook back to that level. 
you can see the fibs, uh, the, the Camarilla is are very close to each other because this is such a very small difference, only 16 pips. That's because there was very little movement yesterday in the euro dollar. So there was really, really quite, uh, you know, quite slow price action, which means that if you have slow price action and price doesn't move, that the next day, of course, the pivot points are going to be close to each other, right? Yesterday was a lot of chop, just sideways. Therefore, the pivot points are going to be close to each other. And uh, well, we didn't take out the L5 yet. So as I said, there is a potential for this to, to fall, I would say now. We are getting the hook back. Uh, H4 all the way above 139, as I said. We need to break. A, and then there's only a few pips here. It's not too interesting. Let's take a look at this euro dollar pullback. Let's take a look at a bit different uh, perspective here. I would say we can put a fib on this very last downside here. Now, probably price is going to make you see already the bounce. I would expect price to make one more dip, one more rise, and then find resistance at the 61 or 78.6. And those levels could be interesting for the downside after we make this, this three wave up correction. So I think personally this is what I would be looking for. If I, you know, when trading this intraday, this is what I would be looking for like this. This oscillator back to the zero line would also be a good indication that you know the retracement is finished and then one of these fibs could be the T tuning spot. All right, so let's move over to the pound again and look at the Camarilla. Let's see, we have L4 breakout at 165.80. You see there's more space here in the pound. You see that? Whereas the, the euro dollar, the, the, the space between the H L4 and L5 and H4 and H5 is about 15 pips. It's ridiculously small in a way. Um, look, the pound dollar has 55 pips here to the downside. And there's 55 to the upside, 54 to be precise. So yeah, a bit more interesting to trade. So here, what do we have here? We have a, a H4 breakout at 167.10 and an H3 short at 166.78. So both make sense to me. If it, uh, if it does move to H3, it could be indeed a resistance spot. One second, let me get rid of this fib. Let's see, the H3 is very close to the 50 fib. So you can see the 38.2 fib or the 50 could be good resistance zones. And as I said with my own analysis, I wouldn't want to short it immediately. Personally, I'd rather wait for the break, pull back, and then go. And that kind of adds up to what the Camarilla is saying because the Camarilla is saying L4 short breakout at 165.80, which means if you're looking for a real trending uh, type of day, then price will have to go that low. Um, L3 long at 166.12. Yeah, maybe I was thinking more at 166. That could be a bouncing spot because that could be the 38.2 fib. But I guess it's pretty close. So that makes sense. We need basically to, to make a long story short, we need price to kind of like break itself out of this consolidation and show kind of its true colors. Either uh, is it going to move up for a, uh, a down or is it going to move up more, more after that? Slash, will it move up and then, um, sorry, will it move down and get follow through? 
Alrighty, let's take a look at others. Uh, let's take a look at dollar yen and an Aussie. All right, euro pound. Uh, basically, getting some good momentum to the upside here. And uh, while we did have divergence, we did have a falling wedge. We did have divergence between these bottoms. So this spike up, in a way, was half kind of like looking out for it. I don't trade it, but I was thinking it could happen. And um, we basically had a break of this triangle to the upside like this. Now, how long can this last? Well, at least we can go up to the 61.8. That's potential possible. Anyhow, let's take a look at this daily chart. And we can see the price is back at the resistance as well here. So, you know, that's still a, an important level for the euro pound. Despite the fact that it did break out of this triangle to the upside, despite the fact that it broke a falling wedge to the upside, you cannot ignore the fact that the price is right at this resistance level. So, for this to really become a very strong uptrend price, we need to break above it, hook back, and bounce. Otherwise, at the moment, price is close to resistance. However, price has been moving up very aggressively which means that, that despite the fact that we're close to resistance, we are strongly set in uptrend. So I'll be neutral at, the, at this point in time, cautious on the euro pound personally. AudiUSD did bounce off the 50 fib. This is what I'm looking for, indeed, a bounce here. And uh, yeah, that's looking, uh, that's looking like a good bounce to me. Um, personally, I think that the 50 fib could definitely be a decent spot for upside continuation here. I mean. We, let's face it, we broke, we are making higher highs, higher lows. We broke this top. So I personally see some space here to the 50 Fib, the minus 272 confluences here. Talking about, you know, multiple time frames and confluences, you can see two targets there in a Fib retracement level. So price could go there if we move zoom up. There's the potential even to go to the 61.8 and the target 61.8 at 93.40. So those are targets to the upside potential. Now, if we break out of this uptrend and we break the support line, obviously things are looking differently. But for the moment, uh, they're looking bullish to me. And uh, we broke this trend line. We broke this top. We bounced off the 50 fib. So that looks bullish to me. Now, could price indeed move up like this and move down like that? I guess so. But to me, this already has a, a decent chance of uh, being the upside uh, to finish the retracement indeed. Let me uh, put on the moving averages. You can see price is trying to break above the moving averages here. So that, you know, to me already seems like a decent probability that we're going to move up. Um, is it, you know, totally confirmed as yet? No, I wouldn't say so. It, we will probably still see a breakout and a pullback before we go. Why? Because the moving averages are totally down pointed, which means that it's going to take price power. It's going to take some power momentum to break away from it. And that's not going to happen in one go. It's going to take its ups and downs to, uh, to move away from uh, those moving averages. The moving averages are like gravity in a way, right? So price is trying to move away from them, but the moving averages are going to act as gravity, especially when they, they break up from for the, like the uh, first time, I would say. It's not the very, when I say first time, I mean like they've been below them for this amount of time. So it's trying to re-break back above it like it did here. And that always costs some energy, and it, it, even though we could, could see a good break, 
uh, it's probably still going to pull back to them and then the moving average will start to curl like this and then the price will probably use them as support. That's a better spot than right now, right here, in my opinion. Because there's more confirmation. So once we get that break, once we get the uh, break and pull back and bounce, 92 and 93.40 are the targets for the odd USD. I think that's about it, really. Otherwise, this is still, you know, this is a good momentum. This is a, looks like a correction down to the 50 fib. So I'm bullish. I see this as an uptrend. I see this as a, a pullback, as an opportunity to rejoin this potential upside. I see the these levels broken as a potential trigger. Now the question is, I don't see any filters. So now the question is, where does one enter? And with that, particular part, I would still just be a bit more um, patient and still want to wait a bit more. I want to see how this breaks and then I want to see a pullback and either take it upon the pullback or upon the bounce after the pullback. That would be my preferred entry method. Despite the fact that all else is in, in place, all the first four steps of that model that we mentioned at the beginning uh, are good to go. I'm just looking for more confirmation of an entry, for the entry. So I hope that makes sense. Let's take a look at um, dollar yen. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah, yen. Yen is saying that uh, the Aussie is born bullish. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, it's it's definitely most recently, of course, uh, last couple of years definitely very bullish. Although last year had a lot of downside. Of course, last year was actually more bearishness than uh, than bullishness, but it definitely had a lot of bullishness. Uh, yeah, like from 2009 onwards, and uh, even before that. Let's take a look on the monthly chart quickly. Here you can see uh, even yeah, before that it had a big run. Then the financial crash had a big fall, but that was just a couple of months downside, and after that it rose again. Only really recently, in 2013, we had the fall here. This was choppiness. But sure, it likes to go up. Look at this on monthly chart. You can definitely see that. It was all the way lower than 50 here, and here it was over parity, so you can imagine. Dollar yen weekly bullish candle, followed by three weeks of sideways move where we had a 200 pip range. Before that, we had a pin bar. So um, this was actually the opposite of the Aussie. This had a very bearish uh, long-term perspective always, actually. But this this currency, as we know, the last one and a half years has made very strong bullish rebounds uh, within this long-term downside, right? So this rebound is, in fact, a major trend on the daily and weekly, but on the monthly, it's still a rebound. And the rebound most recently got a continuation out of this triangle with another break, and this could be a pullback for more, but we don't know that yet. We do see bullish price action, two signals, a pin bar and an and a engulfing bullish twin. So those are looking for like good confirmations that we could see to the upside. The next confirmation will be a break of this magenta. And then the next confirmation will be a break of this top. And if we do that, then upside up to the minus 272 target and the minus 618 target seems likely, where we have 107.80 as a target and 110.80 
I think whether that was just correction from what downside or upside eventually, but we did get followed through of the pin bar and now moving up. After yes, last week's bullish candle, I do think there's a decent chance now of breaking up to the upside and continuing higher in this uptrend. But we do need to break up this magenta. Otherwise, what could happen before we break magenta is a retrace of last week's candle and we should not break last week's low. If we do, then things are looking more bearish and we can move down to the 61.8 and the psychological 100 number and probably bounce there. Any retracement though that doesn't break this bottom is probably still a bouncing spot for more upside. So this is that four hour chart. Now you can see how that magenta line looks like. It's connecting the tops. And this was all that five week or three week choppiness here. Impulse choppiness, downside up. So let's see if we get the follow through. If we zoom into the hourly though, <clears throat> I think there's a, there, I'm, I'm cautious still. I don't want to trade it in here. The reason is that this could be a bouncing spot for more upside and we could break right here right now after this but the other option could be retrace 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 then bounce I don't want to start buying right in here where we're vulnerable to this retrace still that definitely it is a potential so I, I want to be careful rather really wait I rather wait for the break of magenta wait for a hook back and a bounce because otherwise we're still vulnerable to this and in that case, if that does happen, the target could be this 272 or this minus 618. Let's see if there's confluence. Mm, a bit around 102.70. We can see these two levels pretty close. And around 102.40, these two levels, the target and retracement. So that's something you know we have to be cautious of. Um, let's see. I promised after this on New Zealand, I think. Yes, I don't think yes. And after that, uh, let's see. We have pound yen coming up. Uh, let's see, got a question. What indicator is best to use for range trading? Uh, well, I guess I don't trade it too actively, but uh, an indicator, a good indicator is always um, RSI or CCI. Uh, you can even use moving averages. I know that sounds funny, but if you use moving averages, they give an idea if there's a range or not, because if the moving averages are flat like this, then most likely there is a range. Uh, obviously, support of resistance is very important. It's not an indicator, but it's more like a concept or a tool. But support of resistance in a range is really important because uh, if price is doing something like this, for instance, obviously these supports and resistance levels are key for that range. But uh, using an oscillator in this environment is good because it could still be, it's still useful just to get more confirmation. Yeah, indeed, support and resistance is best no matter what kind of trading, indeed. It's really very, it's, it's just key, indeed, key concept, key, uh, key range, key, key concept, yeah. No hard, well, once in a while, but I don't really focus on it. My uh, core business is always trending uh, trades. Doesn't necessarily ex exclude me from trading them, though, because but I would only mostly trade them on higher higher time frames, not so much on lower time frames. If there's, for instance, a range um, on a daily chart, 
then you know if we then break a certain support line like this then that's something I would be interested in and we have a trend on the four hour chart then that's something I would be interested in even though it's a range on the daily uh, as long as it's trending then on the four hour so I do trade ranges but then there has to be some trend on the lower time frame Yes, trading four hour, uh, watching for the trend of the four hour, and my main focus is always on the hourly to trade it. So that's why, but I, I do take a look at the daily chart, so most of the time it's a mixture, but four hour is the key, key, key ingredient for me. Four hour um, is the trending chart most of the time, sometimes one hour. And then most of the time, one hour is the entry. Uh, and then we have filters. I'm looking mostly on the daily chart to see if there's any top or bottom close by. And let's see. Trigger mostly on the hourly. So most of the time, four hour and hourly. But I just take a look at the daily to, to get it. In some cases, it depends. Uh, what's happening? You know, depends if the four-hour hourly are clear, clear charts. Then maybe just daily, just to see tops and bottoms. Yes, overnight I, I keep because if you're a swing trader, um, it uh, it would be difficult not to. Or intraday week trader, um, otherwise you just don't get the R to R ratios that you're looking for. Right, but if you use the if you want to use intraday trading, then hourly charts as an entry is not easy, because um, then you're kind of will be limited in your scope. If you want to trade intraday, you probably have to use hourly as kind of like a semi trigger and 15 maybe more as an entry, because uh, you want to catch like the intraday moves and then get out it before the end of the day. One hourly entries, entries on the one hour chart um, is difficult to trade intraday. I mean, you can get information from them, but using them as an entry is, can be difficult to close. Uh, I myself am interested in this New Zealand yen, by the way. That's because uh, I bought it yesterday. Uh, somewhere in here. Why? Because we had a very strong momentum. The Kiwi is looking strong. The, the yen is looking, had a weakness. Also, if you look at this, this particular pair, we had a correction in the uptrend and then bounced off support, off the moving averages, bounced, and then Kind of like made a smaller triangle here. Let me take a look at the 15. You can see bounced off support, and then started to make like this triangle here, like that. So seemed like we could continue. That it was like a retrace, bounce, and continue up. Uh, how far has this gone? Not too far as yet. I'm still, bit, I'm still patient. Um, Let's see. Trying to measure what the uh, maybe I'll use chill stop at the moment because we are getting some upside, and if we don't continue, then we are vulnerable to maybe a bigger retracement. I wouldn't want to necessarily hang in for that that particular ride. Oh, yeah, I'll do that otherwise afterwards. I don't think anyone is in this, you know, is in the New Zealand yen, probably, but 
So I'll take a look at that later. I don't want to bore you here. Um, we're going to take a look at our New Zealand, I promise, and then pound yen. Weekly chart, we're bouncing off support here. Daily chart made a hook back. You can see the bounce hook back. And is that a hook back from our upside or is this just a re trend, re trend continuation? Now, looking at the monthly chart, I am um, more or less inclined to say that this could be a hook back from our upside, but you never know. This is a big level monthly level so however the downtrend steam here is very strong as well so it's it would be a clash of the trend versus support and resistance let's see daily charts four hour chart now well if you look at the uh, four hour chart it's it's quite easy to say the price is in a downtrend at the moment, no doubt about it. And also we broke this support level. Let's put a fib on this. Hi, nothing is respected. Well, yeah, maybe it is, but here the 38.250 and the 61.8, but we did break through it and didn't get to the 78.6. So that could be potential fall down to the 78.6 fib. I don't know. This odd is 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 difficult to trade. I think it's not an easy one. It's a bit like the euro pound in you know in, in certain manners. How it moves, choppy, not that straightforward. A lot of spikes both ways, despite a trend. I don't know. It's uh, not the easiest. So, could there be a spike up here before we move down? Yes. Personally, I would only be interested if we probably do get the spike and then try to catch a downside here. Otherwise, we're pretty close to the target already. Upside, only interested really if we break above resistance, like this. Move up, hit the resistance, then break for higher ground. Pound Yen. Yeah, I'm going to answer your question in a second, uh, Bob, okay? Um, first, this pound then, we're going to take a look at the fact that we're in uptrend, that we broke this purple line, and that we're prices above the moving averages. Everything is bullishly aligned here, the daily chart. For our chart, we can see the upside momentum continuation. Now we hit the 38.2 fib and went to close to the target. There are, I would say there's a good chance that uh, we could continue higher, but uh, there could be a deep retracement here. For instance, the 78.6 fib or the 61.8. So that is potential. Um, more downside, I would say, this is a very good upside momentum, but before we get that continuation, that could be lower. If we do bounce off this 38.2 fib, then I would like to see a price at least break above this resistance, not only break, but pull back and bounce. I don't see, let me see, 
Marianne is uh, seeing a gap, but where's that gap? I don't see it somehow. Was it last weekend? Or further back in the past? With the last, I mean previous weekend. Two weeks before? Okay. Ah, here. Hmm, that's funny. Let's take a look at the 30. Oh, two days before. Yeah, there's a small gap here indeed, but it's not too big. It's less visible here indeed. It's even smaller. True. Although there is still a bit. Yeah, but on 32, I can see it. That's small, though. It's Let's see, on the 30 minute chart, let's see if there's a difference. Seems to be the same pip size. Maybe it's just the way we have it zoomed in or zoomed out. That could be it. I don't know. Funny, huh? So, yeah, I would, I would say there's a, a retracement potential. The thing is that not everything is aligned here. We have upside breakout, we have an uptrend, but price is moving down, and price is caught between the moving averages. And uh, we're basically reversing, retrace, now retracing against the uptrend. How far can this retrace go? It could go down to these fibs before we bounce up. Or we can bounce immediately, but then if that is so, we need to break above this resistance to know that. So I hope that makes sense. If there's any follow-up questions, let me know. Um, I would not be that interested in pound yen shorts because just of the fact that uh, the dollar yen hourly is, uh, sorry, the dollar yen well, four-hour and daily chart looks like we're going to potentially break to the upside. So I'd still be a bit cautious of that. But there is a potential to move down. It just looks a bit choppy to me. You see, yeah, I am using a trail stop. I just have to figure out uh, which one because, in fact, I think the plan was actually 20, 25 pips below the hourly. In fact, uh, I was using myself the four hour at first and then wanted to switch to the hourly. Um, if I use the hourly, then the trail stop would amount to somewhere like an 8720-ish. 25, sorry. So that would be the uh, the potential trail stop. If you use the four hour for the moment, then the trail stop would still be at around 8690, 8690-ish, 8687 for instance, and then I would uh, zoom in to the trail stop, one hour trail stop when we break this top, for instance, when we get a bit more space. But So those two are the options. For now, I'm still doubting between those two. Um, let's see. Actually, both have their validity, to be honest. Both have their advantages. Could be maybe in this case a tighter trail stop of putting it at 87.25 could make sense because we are close to this top. I wouldn't want to see this turn into something like that, for instance. Although we still could bounce here. Depends. If I don't know which top loss you use, Bob. If you use this one or the lower one, if you use the tighter one, it could be good to trail stop that. 
if you use the the looser one, you it could still be left here, for instance. If you have the tighter one, it could be good to to probably trail stop it. If you have the looser one, then you could leave there. I have part part 50-50, so maybe what I'll do is leave part of it here, and the other one part move up. There's good reason to see this continue because the moving averages are still green, are still bullishly aligned, are still at an angle. So there is good reason to see we have good bullish candles here above it. So there is good reason to, 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 to see it continue with these higher highs and higher lows. already. Dot a cat. Basically in a triangle to be honest. We got uh, this top line like this. We got this bottom like that. Let's see, we got an A, B, C. So this could be D, and we could move down for E and finish the triangle. Or this was just a three-wave correction, and we're going to break right now right here. So in any case, this is still set strongly in uptrend, as we can see looking at this daily chart. You know, there's little doubt what the trend is if you look at this. We had a very strong daily candle pushing above the moving averages, and uh, just looks like a a triangle within this uptrend. So if we break above it, there could be an upside breakout trade here on the dollar cat. That looks pretty interesting in fact. Yep, so Looking for a break of this purple line, would I trade it immediately upon the purple line? No. I would probably be looking for a break, pull back, and continue. Um, so the purple line would be my trigger. But this is definitely an uptrend. This is a sturdy pullback. Um, any filters? No. We have a good trigger. So all only thing is the entry, just looking for a break, pull back, and go. What else? So your yen, same thing as uh, the pound yen bullish structure because we broke out of magenta. Only thing is looking for a pullback from more up before we get more upside probably, right? Because this is, although this is making a triangle, so one could think of maybe one more upside continuation here, but I'd rather wait for the retracement and then the, the bounce. But definitely bullish structure. All right. Let's see. That's uh, that's the Yuri. And definitely looking bullish. So I would, for instance, put a fib like this. And any of these fibs could be the bouncing spot. We might not even go that low. Personally, I, you know, I would be looking for bounces at these levels. I think it's dangerous to trade it to those levels for the moment because, uh, well, because we are in a corrective pattern like this. Just like the euro yen, though, a break, a New Zealand yen, excuse me, uh, a break above this level, this trend line could indicate the potential for it to, to continue immediately, right? That would be the trigger. Is there any particular currency pairs to want to look at? We discussed many of those. I guess still we have a couple of left. <laughs> excuse me. Let's see, you got a few questions in the meantime. Um, 
the reason why we have webinars, why we have webinars on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, is it because not so good trading on Monday, and Friday, low volatility? Yes, yes, definitely Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The highest probability of of interesting developments. Also, uh, Monday is always a very, I think, more of a tentative day where the market is trying to set its ways. Sometimes I do take a trade. Um, but usually I'm a bit more cautious to see what sentiment, what, not sentiment, kind of like what chart sentiment there is. Um, you know, still looking at, a little bit more cautious in, in what, what the market can do. Um, but Monday, you know, slowly but surely the market kind of like breaks free, you see certain directions. So Tuesday is there for easier. And Friday, uh, everything slows. I mean, from a swing trading perspective, everything is closed, is closing, is looking for exits. Uh, if you if you don't want to keep it over the weekend, and uh, for intraday perspectives, most of the time, indeed, these three days are also better. Not always. You could see big movements on Monday, Fridays, but less often. Like the euro dollar yesterday didn't move at all. Uh, the pound dollar did, though, yesterday. It made a retrace, uh, a break of the triangle to the downside. Right? Yesterday. This was yesterday's movement. That was a good fall of 100 pips. Why am I using only the AO and not the MACD? Uh, because MACD and AO are similar, so I don't think there's much value in having both. Having both, I think, would also crowd the chart for you. I think that, for your as a viewer, I mean. So I think that having too many oscillators would crowd up the chart and it would become less visible. Personally, my own trading, I don't use it either uh, because I think the AO is enough. But sometimes in my own trading, I do use ADX and CCI. But basically, the AO, I think, it has the same as MACD, it just has some advantages for my, my own trading. Like, for instance, um, the fact that uh, you have green and red bars, that you can go and count waves on them, wave analysis, so I like that. Uh, Ian Ian is asking about if I keep the trades over the weekend, sometimes, yes. Although it depends from case to case. I need to be, my stop loss needs to be, uh, I would say, I use roughly 50 pips as a guideline. Um, the more the better than 50 though. If it's if the price is getting really close to my stop loss, then uh, I, I don't want to keep it open because then I don't want a gap to, to take me out. If it's really a decent amount of away, then uh, then I do, then I can keep it open. There's not tons of cases I do, but sometimes I do. I was in the pound dollar long, for instance, and I did keep it open from uh, I don't know somewhere in here. I think somewhere in here I took it. Sorry, even lower, uh, which was fourth, and I had it over the weekend. Because it was here, the price was about here, 167.20. You see, that was about 70 pips away. And we're in an uptrend, so I, that was enough for me to say, okay, I'll keep that over the weekend and see if next week we can still continue to the upside. We didn't, but. Uh, pairs, which pairs mostly? Well, I like your odd a lot. I like your yen. I like uh, odd USD. I like, um, mm, let's see. But, you know, it really depends which pair is trending is my, mo my, mo my main focus. I mean, I hardly touched the CAD um, in the years before that, but the last year or so I traded it regularly because the dollar the cat itself wasn't a trend. Like the pound cat for instance I, I traded because it was trending very nicely. So anything that's trending in fact but Mm 
looks like we are getting that downside momentum follow through here in the pound. It's still a bit early to say. As I said, I would want to see a bit more confirmation and a bear flag and a break of that, for instance, for intraday trading. Um, but I always stake out more conservative positions in intraday trading because the most important for me is swing trading anyhow. So if I trade anything intraday, it's just more like a bonus for me. Uh, hedging, no, no. Don't do that. Only sometimes I could hedge profit. Sometimes. But never negative. Or almost never. I mean, maybe four years ago, I don't know. <laughs> but it was really a long time ago. I'm not... Uh, big fan of it. This is really a, a technique I hardly use, even the positive, positive uh, profit. But there are traders that use it, by the way, just that I don't use it doesn't mean that um, it, it couldn't be good for you, but uh, you do have to be careful of negative hedging. That could lead into some of the, some serious difficulties, even positive ones. You want to, you know, we want to have a clear battle plan before using this technique because it is difficult to use. But definitely, some people use it successfully. Yep, you can do that. You can use it instead of a stop loss, but uh, you just have to. You have to know what you're doing because it could it could be quite messy or turn out to be messy. So be careful of that. And I would definitely advise to practice it a lot first on demo or very small, small you know, extremely small positions. Uh, let's see. Last look maybe at the Euro odd and I guess then we've discussed everything. Your odd is more or less in a triangle. Like this, I would say. You can see the moving averages are flat as well. Now that triangle is positioned here after an uptrend. So let's see if it breaks to the upside, it would be with the trend set up. If it breaks the downside, it would be a counter trend on the daily chart. Break the upside would be with the trend. Uh, let's see. What reward to risk ratio I use the most? Well, I actually, um, I like trailing stops in trends because they, uh, they tend to capture various R2Rs, but most of the time actually more than if one would aim for a fixed R2R ratio. The advantage of using, for instance, FIB targets is that, or support of resistance is that you're aiming for something more that is connected to the chart. If you use R2R ratios, then uh, the R2R ratio could be kind of like, for instance, let's say if we aim for a 2 to 1, that could be particular level, could be right above this resistance. Yeah, it could be worth it instead of looking for that 2 to 1, instead of you know, moving it down below the top so that it's maybe less, but more likely. So I don't use, I try to avoid using kind of like fixed R2Rs. I do have, I do calculate them. I do want to see, prefer of course to see some decent R2Rs. Uh, if there's a chance for me to have a bit lower R2R but have it at a safer spot, I would rather do that. If I'm aiming for the break of this top, then I'd rather, rather aim for right away for the FIB target, which would have to be on the daily chart, I guess, one second. Like this, right? And then I rather aim part for this minus 272 target, for instance. Um, so I do keep an eye on that. I do want, for instance, like preferably one to one or, or one after one. But if you use FIB targets and that's a support and resistance, usually you, you do get that. If you don't, then that will be a filter, in fact. Uh, using stop losses, trading stop losses, you do sometimes get higher to ours, like more than two to one. And that could add to the equity curve. 
right? Um, using fixed R2Rs is sometimes good, but can limit the profit, to be honest, compared to trading stop. Um, it depends how good one is in, in finding TPs. Uh, most cases, one after one is already a decent R2R, though, if you're looking at a, if you're looking for particular tuning spots. It all depends how you trade as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, let me let me think. That was close to forty throughout the year. The best months were uh, May, June. April, those were the best for me. Then I had a pretty good month in October as well, if I remember correctly. Or was it September? Oof, now I forgot. Um, not so good months for me were actually November, December. Um, let me see, July was not so good, August was decent. Yeah, when you got May and April and June, there were these good trends on the Aussie. Also, February with uh, the yen. And November somehow, I don't know, November was not my month. Let me take a look. Although this, uh, your eye did make a move, up, up move, I don't know. Sometimes you just, you know, <laughs> just miss uh, certain moves maybe can happen. Let me think. I think I was, let me take a look. Maybe I lost some trades. I think it was on the dollar yen. Let me take a look. I'm not sure why because this was actually moving up. But what I did was I... I was too aggressive with moving with uh, reducing risk because somehow this was moving up, but I didn't capitalize too much on it, which was kind of ironic in a way. But so it was, a bit, it was actually my own fault. So any other particular pairs? I guess I don't know. Maybe the pound out. It 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 too is flat. To be very honest, so nothing spectacular there. In fact, if you look at this pound odd, seems like uh, a bigger correction here, consolidation. Let me get rid of these moving averages. They don't provide much information at the moment. Let's take a look at something cleaner. And move this a bit to the right. And you can see we had strong up, strong down, strong up, strong down. So it definitely seems to be more of a chart pattern here, right? Now, therefore, it's kind of messy. So maybe a break. Oh, for instance, of this could make sense. Other than that, I think I, we discussed most of the normal ones. Let me take a look. We didn't discuss the Kiwi. I think that's the only one, and I guess we'll wrap it up. Uh, Ian, Ian, yes, indeed. It is possible. Um, actually, I don't know if, if soon, hopefully soon, we'll be actually uh, potentially looking into trading one of my strategies in a more automated automated way, so maybe that could be something for you, I don't know. Um, something to, I'll keep you up to date, okay?
this kiwi basically was one of the reasons why I like the uh, using the yen. But one thing though is for sure is that it is an uptrend. The only thing is that we are close. You know, we are at high resistance levels. So that's always a bit scary. Can the trend continue? So now we did make a good pullback within this uptrend. We have had good impulses here, so maybe we can continue. I hope so for the New Zealand yen, but we never know. We are at pretty high levels, so that could turn into resistance. If we do break above these resistances, though. We do break above this trend line, for instance. Oh, then uh, we have the potential to uh, to break out to the upside, to for instance this top right in here, right? Then we have the potential to move up to maybe 88.50. No problem, Ian. By, by all means, if you have any other questions, let me know. Um, Personally, what I like to do, as as I guess you've gathered, is trading with the trend and swing trades, trail stopping them. That that provides, I think, the um, I mean, it's the type of trading that I like. Sometimes I will add intraday trades to it. Um, if you use that method, then don't be surprised. Though I mean, if you if you get 50% winners, you're doing an excellent job. Uh, but if you have something more like around 40, it's actually pretty good, okay? Because you are going to bump into, you are, you know, the tra trading with the trend is not easy. It's not like a, a high per win percentage. You're not going to get that. So, um, but most of the times your average win or average loss is uh, is more than two to one. Your average win compared to your average loss. Depends on how good one is with using filters. If you use, if you are good in uh, filtering out less successful ones, you can get it up to 50 or even higher. Doesn't mean, by the way, that all the others are full losses, by the way, or necessary are all four wins. Right? Because the trading stop uh, helps protect uh, the, the the losses. So a loss could be maybe open four, for instance, for instance. Or break even, so many of these other trades are, you know, maybe 25% are break evens, for instance, or 20. Well, so far I've only trade, I'm only trading manual, but um, I'm working on this this automated system indeed, and I'm not all too sure what the results are of the automated system as yet. So I'm not that far yet. I mean, I have an idea, but it's not um, like I could. It's it's not ready yet. Let me say it this way. So once it is, then I can compare indeed. That would be pretty interesting. Well, uh, which indicators are you using, Ian? Yeah, cheers, Bob. See you later. You know, if you use these, uh, I'm not sure which indicators you use, but if you use these uh, moving averages, you just have to be, you know, tactic, tactical about them, and, and try to find the spots where you expect bounces, right? Like here, for instance, or wait for a bit more confirmation. It's not easy sometimes. You're not going to always be 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 right on those, right? Because if you would. Uh, but using multiple time frame analysis is in that regard useful to see if you can get the uh, with the trend continuation. Sometimes getting in early 
is useful, right? But they can provide a lot of information. If you're using, let's see, ENE is using an automatic strategy on one hour chart based on RSI, CCI, momentum. Okay. Those sound like a lot of indicators that could be a bit difficult indeed. I don't know. That um, you're the best in, you're the best judge of that. I don't know the system, of course, but that sounds like a lot indeed. Well, folks, we'll be back tomorrow uh, on the 12th. So looking forward to see you then. Tomorrow, also, Tarantula has his webinar, by the way, in the evening. So we uh, wish you great trading today. Let's see what we get. Let's take a look at the year dollar, what's happening here. Five-minute chart. Let's see. We did get the uh, up. We did get the down. Let's see if we get one more up. Maybe we don't get that. I'm not sure. Let's put a fib on. And we were close, indeed, this zone. I talked about the 61.8, 78.6. But not too sure if we get one more hook back here. If we do, then that could be a good bouncing spot, I would say. What else did we talk about? Pound dollar is moving down. Let's see if we get more follow through. Uh, let's take a look at the Aussie. Uh, let's see, we're getting, well, we're not getting really that much follow through, is there? Kind of getting uh, some downside again here. Let's see. It's a uh, it's it's an early position, as I said. You know, price is trying to escape the moving averages, but it hasn't done so. So it's it's still vulnerable. You can see the hourly chart has a wick here that couldn't break those moving averages. So that's why I said be careful of those because I really want to see some hourly candles above it, then a hook back, and then I would maybe either look for the bounce or the pullback here. So I'm still a bit early in the game. All right, folks, well, I guess that really wraps it up. We'll take a look at all of them, all these currencies. Um, oh, Ian, Ian, well, if it's up or down, I would say I'm still waiting. If we break below this bottom, we could see maybe one more fall to the 61.8 fib. Uh, otherwise, I'm still waiting for the, actually more for the upside, but I still need to see that confirmation. It could be, could be indeed. We could see some downside follow through to the 78.6. This would be the gap to the downside, and then this one, the next one. At the moment, I don't want to do anything, neither long or, or short. Yeah. Good. Thanks, everyone, for your comments, questions. Appreciate those, and uh, see you tomorrow. Cheers. The organizer.